Smaller, more refined, better sounding than the original Quiet Comfort earbuds, and supposedly benefiting from industry leading active noise cancellation. But for £279, are the new Bose Quiet Comfort earbuds 2 really that good? The ever competitive world of earbuds and in ear headphones is only becoming more popular with the likes of these new Quiet Comfort 2s and the all new second generation AirPod Pros fighting for that top spot, just to name a few. But after having tested these for the last few weeks, where would I put my money? Before we get started and you start to kick off in the comments, there is a reason why we titled this video the Android AirPods, which I will be sharing later in the video, so stay tuned. But first, let's start by taking a closer look at the design of these then. Now, the Quiet Comfort 2s are available in this triple black colorway at launch and a soapstone color coming in November this year. Now, straight out of the box, this soft touch plastic case feels nice and sturdy. And what's also great about this particular finish is that it doesn't show fingerprints, which is a little pet peeve of mine. I've also noticed that we've lost the battery life LED indicators from the original Quiet Comfort earbuds case, and instead we've just got one LED light above the Bose logo, which indicates charge status. There's also a pairing button on the back and the USB-C charging slot on the bottom of the case. Now we also have another LED indicator on the inside of the case, and if we do a quick shake test, yep. As you can see, magnets are really nice and strong, so these won't be falling out when you open the case up. Now, they are on the heavier side of in-ear headphones, and this case does have some weight to it as well. When you compare the weights with the AirPods Pros, these aren't as light. However, I much prefer these to the previous gen, which were considerably larger and heavier, and I think these are actually around about 30% smaller, and in my opinion, that was a much-needed improvement. But Sam, how do you reckon they look in-ear? Yeah, very nice. Yeah? Yeah, I think they look all right, actually. So in each of these earbuds, we've got a 9.3 mil full range dynamic driver, which we will be testing out shortly. These are also IPX4 rated, which means that they're sweat and water resistant. Now, in line with most of the earbuds, we also benefit from touch controls on the side of the earbuds. Now, interestingly, rather than just being supplied with a couple of different tip sizes in the box, we also get a couple of different sized wings or what Bose like to call stability bands for improved comfort and fit, depending on your ear shape and size. Now, I'm not normally a fan of paying a large amount of money for a product only to have to play around with flimsy bits of plastic, which are easily lost. But in all fairness, I've actually seen the benefit to these. And after trying a couple of different ear tip and wing combinations, they do offer a really comfortable fit. Sam, time for a head banging test? Good. <laughs> Pretty sturdy then, but in a more practical sense, for gym users out there, these are definitely worth looking at, especially with the IPX4 rated. Now, finally for design, we have a total of four microphones built into each individual earbud, so that makes eight in total, but we'll be putting these to the test with some phone calls out and about a little bit later on in the video. I think the overall design of these might divide some of you on whether they're to your personal preference or not. Now, personally, I don't mind them. I think they're pretty sleek and I do like how well they fit in my ear, but I'm sure you'll let me know in the comments whether you're a fan or not. On to the features then, and let's quickly tick off the basics just before getting stuck into the more technical features. So firstly, the Quiet Comfort 2s come with Bluetooth 5.3, which gives us a range just short of 10 meters. But in our testing, I actually managed to reach around about 25 meters from my iPhone before they began starting to cut out. Now, the only two supported codecs with these consist of SBC and AAC, which is fine, but that does of course mean that there's not currently any support for high res codecs. In terms of battery life, we're looking at a total of six hours on a single charge, 24 hours of battery when you include the case, and they do offer a quick charge feature, which gives us a total of two hours playback from just 20 minutes of charge time. Now, charging via the earbuds is done via a USB-C lead included in the box, and will take three hours to charge the case fully, with the earbuds taking one hour to charge from empty. And there's also an automatic on-off feature to preserve some of that battery life. Now, in our testing, we've had absolutely no issues with the battery life, and because these are likely going to be worn on your commute or during a workout, you should be able to get a good few days of use out of these without needing to recharge them. And last but not least, we've also got native voice assistant control with these earbuds. Not something I'm likely to use, but if you do prefer hands-free control, then you've got the option. Okay, so 
Here's where we start to get a little bit more technical. Now, first of all, the QuietComfort 2s come with custom tuned technology, which is designed to calibrate the sound performance and the noise cancellation to the unique shape of your individual ear. So this is a form of sound calibration that is activated every time the earbuds are placed in your ears. And you can tell that because there's a very clear whooshing noise you hear when you put them in. So what this is doing is it measures the ear canal's acoustic response from that sound to adjust the sound to best suit your ears. Now, obviously, this is hard to test, but should also help improve noise cancellation performance for you too. Now, the responsiveness of Custom Tune also extends to the transparency mode or aware mode with Active Sense. So that basically means that it responds immediately to loud or very sudden sounds by turning on noise cancellation for as long as necessary, and it tunes out those louder sounds. I tried testing that out by clapping close to my ear, and I do think it does work very well. Now, Bose boldly claim that the noise cancellation in these is the world's best. And I have to be honest, from my experience in testing, I am yet to come across a pair of earbuds that can challenge that statement. The original Quiet Comfort earbuds were class leading in this field, so we had very high expectations with this second iteration. And from testing in the office to out and about next to busy roads or in quieter rural parks, these are very impressive. The noise cancellation is by far the best I have experienced for a pair of in-ear headphones. In the office with active noise cancellation on, I'm completely immersed in my music. I can't hear the air conditioning, the background music, or conversations taking place over the desks right next to me. Even with them in-ear and without music playing, I can only very faintly hear the odd beat drop or someone coughing. I imagine these wings here help with the sound isolation and keeping you locked into the headphones. However, it was with the transparency mode where I was most impressed. Whether I'm outside or in the office, I was able to hear my music very clearly and everything going on around me as well, naturally sounding and in real time. Whether it's a conversation in the office, the coffee machine or outside next to busy roads, the cars driving past, horns beeping, trains passing, I was really impressed. My music was still very much the focus, but I was very easily able to stay involved in conversations and hear everything going on around me. Now the app functionality also plays a huge part in the overall user experience of these headphones. So after a quick setup and connection process, we have our home screen where we're able to really get stuck into the fine tuning of these. So first of all, you'll notice that we've got our battery percentage for each individual earbud, as well as a volume slider. Now, just underneath, we've got our modes tab where we're able to have four different custom setups. Now the quiet and the aware mode already come installed. And as you can see, I have added commute and run. So if we head into the quiet mode, this is our active noise cancellation mode. The aware mode gives us the ability to hear more of our surroundings as well as our music. And with active sense turned on, the level of noise cancellation adjusts automatically. The other custom modes feature a single noise cancellation slider that you can adjust to suit your preferences. Next up, we've got our EQ tab where we can choose between four different options. So we've got bass boost, treble boost, bass reducer, or treble reducer. But we can also tweak the bass, mids, and treble further using these sliders at the top should you want to customize the sound profile slightly. Now you've also got a source tab where you can change the devices that you're connected to. And in the shortcut tab, you can make adjustments to the individual sides as to whether you want the left or the right to cycle through modes or access your voice assistant. So, they look good, they're packed with great features, but how do they sound? Well, after having tested these with an array of genres, tweaking the EQ and listening to them for hours at a time, I've been really happy with the sound performance from these. They offer a deep, immersive sound profile and a pretty impressive, powerful bass response. There's a nice balance to these. There's no muddiness or clipping, the vocals are crisp and detailed, and there's plenty of instrument separation. Now, I wouldn't say that these are as detailed as some of the more expensive alternatives, but the warm sound profile sounds good with most music genres. Now, of course, they are still in-ear headphones at the end of the day, and they're not on a similar level with the likes of my over-ear headphones, but for the price and with that really good noise cancellation, I think these offer a really good sound performance. Unfortunately, I can't do a sound test for you guys as these simply don't fit in our binaural mic. So instead, let's see what some of the team think when they try them out for the first time. Now, don't worry, I'll clean them between each person. It does. Yeah. Not bass. <laughs> it's a really good, actually. Yeah. I don't want to give them back now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
Which they are good. Are so good. <laughs> That's sick. <laughs> How much are they? Is noise cancellation on? <laughs> Talk? Hey guys, Louis here from Smart Sounds. Yeah, I mean, I literally can't hear you. No. Yeah, they're good. <laughs> So in comparison to the original Quiet Comfort earbuds, we've got improved active noise cancellation, custom tuned technology, and an overall better sound design in a smaller, more refined package. But how do these hold up in comparison to something more popular and in a smaller price bracket like the second generation Apple AirPods Pro, which come in 30 pounds cheaper at 249 pounds. It's an interesting comparison and without rattling off the lengthy spec list, on the face of it, there really isn't too much to separate these on paper. They're both IPX4, they both have a six hour listening battery life and both feature Bluetooth 5.3 and have the same SBC and AAC codex to name a few similarities. So what differentiates them? Let's start with the active noise cancellation and for context, these are both very good. So after a long week of testing, here's our thoughts. Now, first of all, you can't turn the ANC off with the Bose QuietComfort 2s. You can make adjustments to the level of ANC in the app, but there's no function to have it completely off, whereas you can with the AirPods. Now, both benefit from adaptive transparency, where the transparency is on, any loud sounds that go above a certain decibel threshold will be reduced down to a more comfortable, safer volume. But which has the better active noise cancellation? Well, in our testing, we found that on the whole, Bose did have slightly better noise cancellation. We used them both in a variety of different spaces and we found that the AirPods were better in the office environment in a generally quieter environment, whereas the Bose were better in much louder, more unpredictable environments. The transparency is again, very good on both pairs and there really isn't too much between them at all. If I had to pick, I would say that the Bose are ever so slightly still playing catch up to the AirPods for transparency. The AirPods are just super clean and as good as the Bose are, for me personally, I was struggling to tell the difference between ambient sound with the AirPods in-ear versus without wearing them at all. Now, one big differentiator for me has been the microphone call quality. I'll give you guys a quick demo here for you to check out. Okay then guys, so we are outside right next to a very busy road as you can see, and we are currently testing out the call quality on the AirPods Pro. And secondly, I have now got the Bose QuietComfort 2 earbuds in to test out the cool quality on these. So make sure you guys let us know down in the comments below, which do you think sounds better? So I think it should be quite clear from our testing that the AirPods are much better at blocking out that background noise, but that's not to say that the Bose are doing a bad job. It's just not to the same level as the AirPods. So for those making a lot of calls, you might find it a better experience on the AirPods. Now, to be honest with you guys, I don't think you can really pick a winner when it comes to sound quality. For me, they both sound great, but the sound profiles are slightly different between the two of them. I found that the Bose offer a dynamic, bassier and warmer sound profile, whereas the AirPods definitely offer an improved bass performance from the original Pros, and they aren't as bassy as the Bose. However, they do have volume adjusted tuning for great balance at any volume. And I think they are slightly more detailed and offer better high-end clarity. Again, I think that this is really gonna just come down to personal preference on what sound signature you prefer. Now, back to that title, the Android AirPods. For me, I think that a large portion of Apple users will prefer to opt for the AirPods as their in-ear headphones of choice. That's not to say that all iPhone users will only buy AirPods. There will no doubt be people who look outside of the Apple ecosystem for their headphones. However, opting for the AirPods as an Apple user gives you access to some decent features that do elevate your experience. Firstly, the setup and connectivity process is seamless. You can switch from iPhone to MacBook, no problem. It connects straight away and you get a nice UI experience with it. With the speaker in these AirPods Pro, you can use the Find My app to trigger a tone to help you find these if you misplace them. And you can now charge this with an Apple Watch charger. All things that on a day-to-day -day basis do add to your experience. However, I don't think you'd really be buying AirPods if you're not in the Apple ecosystem. And so for under 300 pounds, I think these are the best solution for those of you not interested in AirPods or in the Android ecosystem. There will, as I said, be Apple users who would also prefer the Bose for their sound signature or for their noise cancellation, but the clear place for these, in my opinion, is for those of you who don't need the extra perks you get with the AirPods as an Apple user. 
There's pros and cons to both, no matter which ecosystem you're in, but from our testing and in the office, any Apple users seem to find more positives to the AirPods, and those on Android weren't as bothered and preferred the positives for the Bose. So call that my market research. Okay, feel free to bash me in the comments. I'm just kidding. This is a troll-free zone. Back to these then. For £279, I honestly think you're getting a fantastic pair of earbuds for all of the reasons that we've just covered. But there are a few problems that we've run into during our time testing these and a few features we don't have but sorely miss. Firstly, we found the app and the connectivity process to be quite troublesome at times. Sure, it's easy and simple enough to set up, but the inconsistent connection and dropouts were a little more frequent than we would have liked. And I found it to be a little frustrating to use at times, having to keep going to the app to connect them rather than that process being automatic. It would also have been nice to see wireless charging functionality like we had with the original Quiet Comfort earbuds. I'm not actually quite sure why that's been taken away, but something I really missed was the inability to connect to multiple devices at one time with multi-point Bluetooth pairing, but this could come as an update later as these are equipped with a 5 series Qualcomm chip which supports multi-point Bluetooth pairing and has AppDeck support. So I guess we'll have to wait and see whether we get any software updates in the future. So taking everything into consideration, would I buy these? Yeah. Am I going to? I don't think I am. As much as I enjoyed the noise cancellation, the sound performance of these, they just don't tick all of my boxes. But that's my personal preference. And I really do think a lot of you out there will really like these Quiet Comfort 2s. And if I had a pair, I wouldn't be disappointed at all. There's just a lot of choice in the market currently, making it a tough competition. But I'm more interested in what you guys think. Will you be picking up a pair of these? Be sure to sub if you haven't already, and let me know if you'd like a full video on the AirPod Pros. For now, thank you guys very much for watching and I'll catch you next time.